last couple of years. Now, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, because I don't know if the door is completely shut. Um, there's been some lip service, but I don't think it's re- real. Ezekiel Elliott is gone. Um, he's still out there, though, technically. So, in, in theory, they could bring him back. But how does that ship the offense? Uh, and stylistically, still a good player, but obviously a descending player. And now they have to go a little bit in a different direction with Tony Pollard being the lead back and uh, doing some things uh, probably in a less power-based way, I would say it. Uh, Is that going to change things dramatically for the Cowboys? I don't know if it's dramatically, but it definitely changes things because the Cowboys haven't really replaced Ezekiel Elliott. They went out and signed Ronald Jones. Uh, They drafted Deuce Vaughn in the sixth round. Those aren't really Ezekiel Elliott replacements. The the one thing that's really missing on this offense is an Ezekiel Elliott type back. Who's going to be that guy, you know, when they play the Eagles and it's third and one, fourth and one late in the game. And for all, for all the criticism that you could have had a Zeke, a lot of it comes because of what his contract ended up being. Zeke was still very good goal line, short yard situations. You gave him the ball. He was going to get you that yard most of the time. And now they don't really have that guy. Tony Pollard is, is great in space and, uh, Deuce Vaughn, I think, is a player that can be great in space. But who's that guy that, you know, you know, puts their head down and you're just like, man, you know that you're going to get that yard. And, and, and when you don't get that yard, you're surprised. And so it's kind of interesting that if Ezekiel Elliott had been with a different team that had released him, I think the Cowboys would be super interested. But because of the way things ended, it's like, well, we're not going to bring him back in here. So now you're sitting here thinking like. I don't think they're they're completely set at running back. I'm interested to see what they do there. Maybe that it ends up being one of those things where they go get like a Leonard Fournette or somebody like that. But I just do not see Ezekiel Elliott coming back. I think he'll get an offer from someone else. Um, and obviously, he ain't going to be anywhere close to the money he was making before. But I, I look at this roster and I don't see a replacement. I don't see that six one two twenty guy that you're going to hand the ball to on, on third and one situations right now. What is Brandon Cook's role going to be for the Dallas Cowboys this year? Major offseason acquisition. He's put up numbers, but he's become one of the more transient guys in the National Football League going from team to team to team to team. Why is it going to work in Dallas? Well, he's in a spot now where, I mean, his role is pretty clear. He's got to take the top off the defense. They've been missing that speed on the outside, and so – a veteran guy like him who, I mean, he's been around Drew Brees, been around Tom Brady, been to, you know, Super Bowls. You know, he has the skins on the wall that you would think he should come in immediately and and be a capable guy of getting a 1,000 yards. And the Cowboys had that a few years ago when they had Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup was healthy, you know, with C.D. Lamb. And then last year, they, they trade Amari Cooper, don't get much for him in return. Michael Gallup was not fully recovered from the knee injury he had the year before. Their third round pick, Jalen Tolbert, gave them nothing. So there wasn't there was some issues at wide receiver. It had to be addressed this offseason. It was kind of surprising they moved made the move for Cooks because that just isn't typically a, a Cowboys move um, during the free agency portion of the year. I thought they would address it early in the draft, but they wanted a proven guy to now Cooks is probably your two slash three with with Gallup if Gallup's all the way back. And now you're kind of back to where you have three formidable guys on the outside. But it is interesting, you know, you mentioned it. As good as he's been for all these different teams, it is to be traded as many times as he has, and he's not like he's a cancer in the locker room type guy or anything like that. It yeah, has it's been so weird, his yeah, because career, he's had success. It, it, yeah, it's it's he's been so successful. He's traded so much. He's not a bad guy. It, it is one of the the weirdest things, John. Um, there are other kind of splashy free agent acquisition type move was. More interesting to me, that's on the defensive side of the ball with Stephon Gilmore. Now he's 32, so but he can still play. And the Cowboys had a lot of issues when they had some injuries opposite Trayvon Diggs. Now all of a sudden you have Diggs and Gilmore. That's pretty good. I I, I like that on paper. Yeah, as, all, as long as Gilmore can stay healthy, they'll be fine there at corner and, and be much improved than they were last year because you're right, during the – last four or five games of the regular season and going into the playoffs, that other outside corner spot was far, far from a strength after Anthony Brown went down. And so they made a conscious effort to address that this off season. And and those deals happened. The same thing as cooks right around the same time. It was very clear that those were two of their biggest holes and they were going to fill them with proven players. They weren't going to be 
uh, leaving it open to some competition out in training camp. And so if Gilmore can stay healthy, that was the big thing is that he wasn't fully healthy two years ago. And then he went to the Colts and from, from talking to him a week ago, that's when he really started to get back. And he says right now he's healthier than he's been in the last two or three years. And now he's in a spot where he doesn't have to be their number one. He just has to be formidable on that other side because, you know, obviously Trayvon Diggs gets a lot of attention and everyone knows who he is in the league and his ability to take the ball away. And so it, it was just, it's interesting on paper because it, the, the Cowboys just continue to get stronger on defense to the point where this could be the best defense in the league. It's certainly going to be in the conversation again. It's one of the best. And this is an organization that for a, a long time down here, it's been very offense first. And now I, I, I think it's officially changed. This is a defensive first team.